In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to thin your paints, what to look for, and why it's important, and we're starting right now. What's going on guys? Jared here from Mini Junkie. So this is going to be a bit of a controversial video, I think. As much as thinning paints to paint miniatures and toy soldiers can be controversial. My wife told me I'm raising my eyebrows too much in these videos and, cr and it looks weird, so I'm trying to stop doing that. Well, first of all, thinning your paints is important. Really important. In fact, I would say any painting video where, or interview or blog where someone is talking to you about how to get started in painting, one of their tips is going to be thin your paints. And one of my favorite online tutorial tutors, Duncan from Warhammer TV, almost always says you're going to want to apply too thin coat. They'll also all, almost always tell you that the consistency to shoot for when you're thinning your paints is milk. Can you see, can you see this? This is Canadian milk. This is what we drink at my house. Here's why I don't love that as, an, as a guide line. There's more than one kind of milk. As I showed you, we drink 1% at our house, which is borderline water. Not quite skim milk, but it's pretty thin. Meanwhile, you got cats who would love to drink the milk right out of the cow, from what I've seen in videos. There's also homogenized milk, which is thicker. There's creams. Maybe you're going to go for like a whipped cream. When I was growing up in Inuvik, and yes, I lived above the Arctic Circle, you had to get your milk, at least when I, at that time, in a box that was powder or something. It was called UHM milk or something. It was gross. Anyway, my point is, that's enough about milk, with all due respect to the Milk Council of Canada. My point is, one size fits all doesn't work very well when it comes to thinning your paints. And despite the fact that there are painters who could take paint that's almost 90% water, do 75 layers and create something absolutely incredible, and that is, I'm only half joking about that. For a beginner or even an intermediate painter, if your paint is too thin, you're gonna just be super frustrated and have a tough time. I'm also gonna make a really controversial statement here. You don't always have to thin a paint. It comes down to what brand is it? What color is it? How old is that paint? How long have you had it? Is it airbrush paint? Is it not? Is it good to thin with water? Is it not? One example, scale 75 metallics, when I add water to try and thin them, they go to hell. They just like break up into the green carrier medium and they, they it destroys them. So I have to find something else to thin them with. My point being, it's not always cut and dry how you're gonna do this. Also, if you're painting an army, if it comes down to like the troops, the, the units where the visual impact is more about a big group of guys versus like having beautifully painted individuals times 20, you maybe don't even need two thin coats. Sometimes, depending on the paint, one coat out of the pot is probably okay. When it comes to colors, paints like red, yellow, orange, there are certain colors where they're naturally quite thin coming out of the bottle, and so even a little bit of thinner goes a very long way, whether it be water or whether you start to use things like, uh, you know, Vallejo's got acrylic thinner, for example, or thinner medium. These all do very similar jobs of, add, you know, you add it to the paint and it helps thin it, keeps it from drying out too quickly. But again, yellows, reds, oranges, very thin out of the bottle, so sometimes you only need to thin them a tiny bit, if at all, and with a wet palette, maybe you don't even need to thin them much at all, like I just said. Conversely, you get your whites, and there's probably some other ones, I'm just blanking right now. A white paint is very thick. It's got to do with the type of pigment, I'm guessing. I'm not a paint scientist, but um, white paint is naturally quite thick and quite quick to dry. So you pretty much are always gonna, if you're hand brushing, you're almost always, you're pretty much always gonna have to thin white paint, for example. Sorry, this video is a little all over the road, and I even wrote out a bit of a script, so I don't know what's going on. I can't help kind of digressing all the time. Um, so I would consider if you're a beginning painter or you're looking to up your game a little bit, while water works fine for a lot of paints, it's almost universal, except for that one scale 75 example I gave you, 
um, an, an a thinner or a glaze medium or there's different types of like a flow improver they often have different names but that actually is made of the same sort of stuff the paint is and so it will thin it and improve how it flows and improve the smoothness you're getting but it'll also keep the pigment together and it'll retain that uh, the right viscosity uh, so that you're not getting a lot of weird pooling or streaking or strange effects that the water might do. So if it isn't milk, what consistency are you going for here? Well, in a way you're going to develop this over time as you paint. You're going to start to realize what looks chalky, what leaves brush strokes, and conversely, what doesn't cover well, what, what is frustrating to work with, what pools in the creases, and things like that, so that's too thin. My recommendation is usually, as you take some out of the pot, and you get some on your brush, can you see that there's paint on the tip of your brush? Is it like a blob, and it's a thick blob that's not like um, breaking up at all? So it looks like a, well really, a, a slightly dry blob on the end of your brush. Is it your brush has the color, but it's still, you, you're basically seeing the silhouette of the bristles just nicely, so it looks like the paint has gone into the belly of the brush. That's about right. If you can barely see any color and it's like very watery and you feel like you're about to apply a wash, that's too thin. And it gets down to how pleasant is it to paint onto your model. If you're finding that it's, you start to do a stroke and it's like drying out as you're going, or you start to do a stroke and it's running down the cloak, you know, that's where you start to try to dial in how much you've thinned it. Because really the goal is each brush stroke is nice and smooth. It's damp, so you can maybe blend it if you want. It depends what you're going for. Um, you're not fighting it. You're not trying to avoid, you're not getting lots of brush strokes or weird like clumping or anything like that. You're just getting a nice smooth coat. I'm like waving my hand with each brush stroke here. You're getting a nice smooth coat with each stroke. And so you've kind of, that's when you know you've hit the right point of, of thin with that color and that brand. I'd also encourage you to watch tutorials by other painters and a lot of them will literally show you exactly how they're thinning the paint itself. For example, Sarastro will actually have his paint wells on camera and you can see how he's thinning the paint. For me, sometimes I'll, have, I'll put a little blob out of my, let's say it's a dropper bottle, and I'll take my plastic coffee stir stick, because that's what I use, I'll just dip them in my water for a second and then just stir it into my paint, and that's thin enough, quite, on, quite honestly, for the bar that I'm going for with that particular model. Again, if I was painting for a competition or a beautiful display piece or something I've sold to someone for a lot of money, I would be doing thinner coats, I would be building up much more gradually, and I'd be trying to retain as much detail as possible because that is the bar that I would have set for that miniature, and that is the level of effort I would want to put into that miniature. But when it comes to painting troops or 50 skeletons, you know, I'm thinning it enough so I'm not making a clumpy mess of these guys, but I'm also not thinning it so much that I have to do eight coats to get, you know, the bone to show properly. When you're first starting out, what you can do is, if you're not sure about a certain color or you think, oh, this might be too thick or whatever, maybe you've got a spare miniature sitting there or maybe just take one of the 20 you've got and just in a small area do a little bit of testing. Like, is this flowing nicely? Is this drying out too quickly? Is this like not covering at all and getting, going to be frustrating. And, and in that way, you're going to learn to dial in your thinness. You're going to learn to just have the right feel for when you dip your, the tip of your brush in the paint, is it behaving properly? Is it the right smoothness? Is it the right level of wicking? Or is it going to pool? Or is it going to clump and dry and leave streaks? Working on having a feel for that is going to make you an incredibly better painter than if every single time you're putting a color or a brand into your palette and you're trying to get it to the consistency of milk. Because like I said, there's a lot of milk out there. If you found this video interesting and compelling and thought provoking, and it was helpful for learning how to thin your paints, I'm tripping all over. I hope you'll consider sharing and subscribing and liking the video to help me grow the audience and continue to create great content like this. Pretty, apparently I think it's great.